Now, very important topic from visual pathway. So, since our medical days, we are seeing this picture, we are reading in MRCPCH also, it's very, very, very important. So, one simple theory I always remember. Whenever you have a question about the visual field defect, always uh, draw this picture in your spare paper. It will help you a lot. What I remember that always remember that this right is right sided and blue is left sided. So if blue is coming from left side they will go only left. You see from blue here there here it is going from the left eye left side of the left eye and when it is going there left side of the right eyeball. Am I clear? Always remember th this thing, the left nerve always going to the left side of both eyeball. The right nerve always going to the right side of both eyeball. Clear? You see the red one going to the right side of this wall and right side of this eyeball. Okay? But what is the most uh, critical thing here to remember? Usually in, in during exam due, due to stress, we usually get mixed with all those things, the right, left. Always remember the left one will go to the left of both eye, the right one will go to the right of both eye. But they will reflect opposite. They will always reflect opposite. So this blue thing will reflect this way, this red thing will reflect the outer side. So here the blue is in the outer side but it will reflect its vision on the right side. This red one in the right side but it will reflect on the left side. And you can always remember if these are the two eyes, here is the nose and here is the ear, right? Here is the nose and here is the ear, two ear. So this is nasal view, this is temporal view, clear? This is nasal view and this is temporal view. You have to remember this. Okay, is that clear? So always remember the left nerve goes to the left of both eye, the right one goes to the right of both eye, but they are making reflection opposite side. You see red coming here, blue coming inside. So whenever you have a lesion here, you have a lesion here, what will you, what, what will happen? These all are intact. So this blue part showing the temporal vision, like when I am looking at you, this blue part is showing my this side of my vision of this right eye. This right part is helping me to show if you, if I divide my eyes from here, this is the nasal vision and this is the temporal vision. So the right one helping me to see this way, the nasal vision of right eye and the blue one is helping me to see the, this vision. So if it is cut from here, I cannot see both the nasal vision and temporal vision of my right eye. So in this case, my right eye will be completely blind. I cannot see anything with my right eye. Clear? Okay. Now, if the lesion is here in the optic chiasma, what happens? You see, here, this right, this right is going to this right without crossing the chiasma. But this red part is going to here crossing the chiasma. So I can say this red part is missing because the chiasma is cut. Again, for the blue one, blue one is going to the blue uh, left side of both eye. So whenever this blue one is going to this part, they are not crossing the chiasma, right? But when they are going to this left part, they have to cross the chiasma. So what I can see that this nerve and this nerve has been cut. What I told you before, they are doing the opposite vision. So this red part is giving me the, my temporal vision and this blue part is giving me this temporal vision. So what will be lost if there is a lesion in the optic chiasma both the temporal both the temporal vision will be lost. I can see only the middle part of only this view will be intact. This view will be lost. This uh, optic chiasma lesion is coming very very often. Uh, so it what it says at this is temporal vision and the both temporal vision are lost. So this is called bitemporal hemianopia. Clear? Whenever you have a lesion in the red part here, what will be happen? The red will goes to the this side and this part. So what will happen? I will lost one nasal vision, one temporal vision. Clear everyone? 
usually these trees are coming other these four five six seven these are very complicated usually these are not coming very rare uh, i would suggest you to learn the easy things learn the easy things memorize the easy things remember the easy things if you study these it will confuse you more so that later on it will happen that the common thing has has come in the exam and you got confused so better you study the common things if you want to read those i will explain you later here i have put some questions about this um, this uh, topic yeah, you can solve this alone and i have also put the answers here is the answers okay you can do it by yourself and you can have the answers so this is all about our lecture notes what i would suggest you that at first you should know what are the common topics what we have put in the lecture sheet in the first page there i have put the com common topics of uh, important topics of pop can you please come to the page number one again i will discuss again now for asthma you will have uh, you have to know what are the acute attack, what is the stepwise management, steroid complication, life-threatening attack management, inhaler method. All I have put this in the lecture note. Asthma is a very important topic. Cystic fibrosis is a very important topic. There will be no question without the cystic fibrosis. Signs, symptom, diagnosis, management, investigation, all are important. In asthma, there will be no question. In asthma, the question will be very easy. Like it, it will say that a seven-year-old girl has come. The child is having salbutamol inhaler and a steroid inhaler at home. What will be your next step? You know, next step will be Montelukast. The questions are easy, but you have to learn. We ha you have to know. And there is a extra management for more than five years and less than five years. That is also put down here, here, up here. These are the chronic management. These are also written down here. In my next topic lecture sheets, I will try to put the page number of the respected books page number so that it will be easier for you all the materials nothing is written by me i just accumulated all the important topics from different books of royal college so that you don't need to study all the books you don't need to search all the topics okay so it will be easier for you wheezing we all uh, i have already told you that cause of wheezing what to do bronchiolitis for foreign body what to do for bronchiolitis what to do viral induced wheeze what to do uh, stridor scenario vascular ring in this lecture sheet i have already put it down by can you remember if anyone read i told you if any question or scenario telling you that the child is having cough and having difficulty swallowing difficulty swallowing lumpy food the diagnosis will always be vascular ring in every question there will be a clue i will find out those clues for you so that it, if you look at the question you can remember that yes there's Difficulty in swallowing, it will be vascular ring. Laryngomalacia, a child is having stridor since day one of life, since day three of life, or within the one month of birth. It is definitely laryngomalacia if the question has no other features like a fever, a child has no fever, drinking well, whenever drink, uh, having breastfeed, the stridor increases and the stridor started uh, since uh, day three of life. It's, it will be always laryngomalacia. These are the things you have to know to answer. Hemangioma, a child is having ready spot in, in the body and suddenly she has developed stridor. Probably she has a hemangioma inside the larynx also. Okay, 